Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to our first Facebook Live. I am Lynn House, the Vice President of Enrollment and Marketing at Heron Classical Schools, and we're here today at Heron Prep, and I'm going to let my friends introduce themselves. Hello, I am Dr. Tanika Holden Flynn, founding head of school for Heron Preparatory Academy. Hi, and I am Sean Hensleit. I am the Director of Curriculum and Instruction for Heron Preparatory Academy. We're so excited you can join us today. We are going to take you through a couple classrooms, one uh, a second grade class, so you can see if you were here. And the reason we're doing this is because right now with the COVID surge, we want to keep our teachers and students as safe as possible. So we are really hopeful that this works. You all are our test Facebook Live, so we'll see. We're hoping that you know we can't do any take twos, that everything goes smoothly. We just appreciate your grace as we go through this. We're going to show you a second grade classroom, and I'll let Dr. Holden Flynn and Mr. Henselay, after each place that we go into, they'll kind of do a little debrief on what we've seen, and then we'll go into our next location. Yeah, so in this first location, you're going to see, as uh, Ms. House said, you're going to see Writer's Workshop. And so students uh, had a mini lesson where the teacher taught them about a specific point in writing, and now they are applying that in independent work or small group work with the teacher conferring with students to help take their learning further in writing. So let's go on in. I want you to think about when you're watching your kids learn, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, mm -hmm. what you're smelling, whether we listen to all the senses. Thank you. 
So that second grade class was working on uh, a poetry unit. They just started that unit, and so you may have seen they're working on the idea of how we decide what to write poetry about. And so their papers had a watermelon on it to help them think about big ideas, right? And then seeds to think about what in those big ideas can we really focus in and write about. And so you saw uh, one teacher walking on the, around the room and helping students, and you saw another teacher meeting with a small group of students to help support them in that generation of ideas for this unit. You also saw myself and Dr. Holden Flynn and Ms. House jump in and talk with students as well, because we just can't help ourselves. If we're in there, we want to talk with kids, and we want to find out what's going on and help them in any way we can. So that was our first room. We're about to go into a second location where you'll see a small reading group. So this is a small group of students working with a teacher um, in reading uh, skills and strategies. So that's where we're headed next. I, I peeked over our camera woman's shoulder and saw there were a few people online, and I um, am going to ask it first if you all have questions, and as uh, Hannah is our camera woman, and as Hannah's looking to see if there are any questions, let's talk first about what we just saw in that classroom. Yeah, so in that second grade room, uh, or I'm sorry, excuse me, in that small reading group, I, my mind was still on the first thing we saw. Um, in that small reading group, you saw a group of students working with a teacher on specific skills and strategies that they need in reading. And so we talk a lot about the idea that students need extended opportunities to read and write and practice what they're doing. You saw that in the first room. 
In the second room, the second visit, you saw a really explicit direct instruction. And students need both of those things, we believe, in order to uh, do their best learning. And so you saw in that room also a lesson in perseverance. When the students were not quite sure, the teacher asked the question in different ways. And there were letters there to help them as they're forming these new ideas. The, these are all key components of our literacy instruction. And I noticed when that teacher that was helping in the reading group asked Ms. about Miss Rose, sorry, asked about if there uh, G L A D and the little girl went and I was you know, I always do that for my bread and drink. Um, I, and I forgot you could do that so yes. they're obviously learning little skills and tools yeah. to help them out. So Dr. Flynn, did you have anything you wanted to add about what we saw? Um, no, um, I think that yeah, you, you pretty much covered it, Mr. Hensolite. But yeah, I think it's just really exciting to see um, our students growing every day. Um, you know, like when they came in, and we just see like the milestones that they continue to make. So that's great. That is exciting. Do we have any questions? Okay. Nope. I'm going to ask Dr. Olin Flynn, when you think about the start of Heron Prep, uh, what was it that excited you the most about starting the school? Wow. <laughs> these are all just, I'm just throwing questions. We did not practice this. So these are off the top, heartfelt, just yes. thinking off the top of our head. So that is a hard question because I feel like there were a lot of things, right, that were extremely exciting and desirable about starting this school. But I think, honestly, for me, if I had to pick one, um, it would just be the fact that we already have two existing high schools, right, that have been doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you really think about classical education, that the fact that it should start with grammar at an elementary school. Mm -hmm. And so I think when I think about just having students that can literally go from K to 12 with an excellent, a very strong, rigorous foundation, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. so, so I was very excited about that. Yeah, that's awesome. And to piggyback off that, when we were in that second grade classroom and they were talking about the poems and this little girl said, I have strong feelings about this. And the teacher prompted her a little bit more to get into some more critical thinking in that. And so that was really exciting to see what we teach in the high schools already happening in the lower grades. So yes. what about you, Mr. Henselite? What excited you most and what have you seen in these scholars in these few months that we've started this school? Yeah, so personally what excited me most was to get back to elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, my roots are all in elementary, but for the past three years before this, I've been working at Heron, and, uh, Heron Riverside High Schools, uh, and so I was really excited to get back to our youngest learners, and that's because I just think it is so amazing what happens at these early ages, right? As we see kids learn and grow and the foundations that we're setting to set them up for success in the future. We do have two questions. Okay. Um, the first is from John. He asked, how is your school slash curriculum approach different compared to a Montessori or CFI school? Yeah, so um, I have some familiarity. I have not worked in Montessori or the CFI schools myself, so I'm going to start with that disclaimer. Um, but I will say uh, that um, when we think about, I guess I would really stress that idea we have of students needing both a direct explicit instruction and in skills and that time to read and write in action, right? Both of those things we believe are very important. I know this is literacy, but we think about that in math as well with procedural understanding of math, how we do it, but also conceptual understanding, understanding what we're doing. And I think that that balance is really important for us. I would also say that we are a classical school and focus on the ideas of trivium. So as Dr. Holden Flynn referenced, grammar, uh, those three are grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and taking students all the way through those base ideas to critical thinking and critiquing the work of others and debating with each other in respectful and thoughtful ways. Um, and so that's a key piece for us. And we are a classical liberal arts school, which means we also really emphasize a well-rounded curriculum. We have a dedicated science and social studies block each day. We also have a dedicated separate writing block each day. It is integrated with our reading, but it is a separate block of time so that writing doesn't get lost in the mix. Um, and then we also, in our related arts classes, we call them related studies, but you probably know them as related arts or specials. We have kind of your classics, gym, um, art, and music, but we also have a STEM, 
uh, class. We have dance currently. First semester it was theater, and this semester it is dance. Then we have a global studies class where students study French, Spanish, and Latin, um, 12 weeks of each of those throughout the year in grades K through 5. And they study those languages and the countries or cultures where those languages are spoken or originated in the case of Latin. Um, and so that well-rounded curriculum is really sets us apart, I think, and is a core piece of our being. Great. Our second question is from Ben. He asked, how do you cater your approach for high achieving students? Dr. Holmquin, do you want to start off? And then I can sure, add in. absolutely. Um, and so I think um, that's a great question. How do we cater our approach for high achieving students? Really what we try to do is look at all of our students, right? We look at all of their data individually. And so we literally like create plans and intervention um, or enrichment that is specific for that student and for that student's needs, right? So for example, when you saw um, the video of the second group that we went to see when students were being pulled out, like that was work for their level um, and their skill set. And so no matter what level a student is, no matter how high they are or low they are, we would then be pulling resources to really meet them where they're at. Um, and then we also do use some um, computer generated tools to support that work as well, which again, it really just meets students where they are and then focuses on bringing them up. Yeah, and I would just add that workshop model that you saw and we talked about with that mini lesson and then that work time, that really supports um, differentiation for students of all levels, right? We do that in reading as well and in math. And so students can be reading books at their level, working on skills and strategies. Um, <laughs> a lot of times the same skills and strategies across different levels of books and things like that. So that's uh, that workshop model really allows us to do that differentiation for all levels, including, including our highest achievers. That's it. Okay. <laughs> we thank you so much for joining us today. And we have two other Facebook Live sessions coming up um, on math and uh, related studies related studies so join us for those you can find the information on our website or on our facebook page and thanks so much again for joining us today we actually did just get one more oh, question sure. if you don't mind <laughs> um john also asked how long do you anticipate being in these temporary units before moving to a more permanent structure so uh, we are scheduled to be in this temporary location again all of next school year um, and then once that school year ends, we will be moving to our permanent location. Um, and we are in the process of finalizing that now. Awesome. Very exciting. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. You.